Today on Stock Charts in Focus, it's all about the charts. We're talking about how to position indicators and overlays on your Sharp Charts and ACP Charts, our new interactive advanced charting platform. You got tons of different options in both platforms for positioning indicators and overlays on your charts. Whether you want them above, below, behind price, behind different indicators, lots and lots of different ways to customize your charts and create really powerful views. Now, whether you're looking at an individual security or if you wanna take multiple symbols, put them all on the same chart, you've got those options in both Sharp Charts and ACP. We're gonna show you how on today's show. Lots of tips and tricks that you're gonna get out of this episode. So, of course, you know what it is. It's all new, it's all here. It's Stock Charts in Focus. All right, my friends, welcome to today's episode of Stock Charts in Focus. Thank you so much for joining me here on our product focus show where we get to dig into the site, dive into the tools, show you around the features, and on a day like today, give you some powerful tips, tricks, and tutorials, shortcuts, show you things you've never seen. I am sure that on today's episode, digging into the charts, showing you how to position overlays and indicators on your charts, you're gonna see something that you probably haven't seen before or think about something in a way that you haven't thought about it before. Of course, that is our mission here on this show, giving you more value out of stock charts. If you leave at the end of the episode knowing something you didn't know when you started or seeing something in a way that you hadn't seen it before, then we've done our job giving you the most value out of stock charts that you possibly can get. My name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at Stock Charts. Again, I wanna thank you for joining me, whether you're coming back to the show or joining us for the first time. As a quick reminder before we kick off, we do this show every Friday. Again, designed to help you get more value out of the site, make sure that you know everything there is to know about stock charts. So if you are a stock charts user, this is the show to watch once a week, every Friday. Short little episode, we cover something from around the site to help you uh, see something in a way you haven't seen before and do something with stock charts that you, uh, that you probably haven't done before. So lots that we cover here. Every Friday though, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on Stock Charts TV, also up on our YouTube channel after that or the new on-demand platform at stockchartstv.com. So lots of ways to watch uh, every Friday. Look forward to having you again on, uh, on the next episode that we do. But this week, we've got some pretty fun stuff to cover. Uh, we're gonna talk about something that people have probably used to some extent, but might not be getting the most out of. And in the process, we're also gonna do a little bit of a comparison between Sharp Charts, our original tool, the one that you're probably familiar with, and ACP, our new interactive advanced charting platform, a much more dynamic sort of fluid charting experience we have on the site now. So two platforms, two different ways to watch the markets, similar concepts, but there are some differences between the two. And we're gonna show you how to do sort of the same thing in both platforms um, and, uh, and get some more value out of either one in the process. So lots to cover on today's show. Also gonna be a fun one because I'll show you some of my charts, some of how I am personally using these tools uh, in my own approach to the market. So we got a lot to cover. Let's get right to it. So we are starting here with Sharp Charts. We're gonna start in the, uh, the Sharp Charts workbench and then we will jump over to ACP. Uh, starting here though from what we call the Sharp Charts workbench. If you ever come up to the top of any page around the site, uh, you see Sharp Chart here and you type in a ticker symbol, you're gonna be taken over to this page and this is what we like to call the Sharp Charts workbench. Now you've got the chart up top, but you've got all of these different settings and everything that you can do to sort of structure your chart down below. So that's really what we're gonna dig into today here on the Sharp Charts workbench. I wanna show you this chart specifically though, because this is one of my go-tos. This is one of my uh, most frequently used uh, chart styles. You can see I've actually got it saved as a, uh, as a chart style up here. Uh, this is what I call my, it's a two-year chart. I call it my level three equity chart. Um, so there's a lot on here though that is uh, really a perfect example of the stuff that we are gonna cover today. So I thought this would be a good starting place. I'll run you through sort of what's on this chart and then we'll talk about the settings down below that you can use to create it. Because as you'll notice, I've got a whole bunch of indicators on here, but they're positioned in some creative ways around this chart. 
So starting with the price panel itself, of course, we've got the main price panel here, and I've got a couple of different overlays on here, mostly just moving averages. I also have some settings turned on like the, uh, the price labels, but I've also got volume positioned uh, sort of in the price panel. That's what we call behind price. You'll see that in just a second. So a couple of overlays in here, one indicator, that being volume positioned behind price. Above that primary price panel though, I have one indicator. This is a price relative line. So you can see here, I've got the verbose legends turned on. Actually, that's another option down below. Uh, but we've got Adobe in this case versus VTI. So this is a ratio chart uh, set in performance, but I've got this positioned above the chart because what this is telling me is how is this security performing relative to the total market? Is it outperforming the market? Is it underperforming the market? That's one of the most important pieces of my approach. So I want this indicator positioned above. And as you uh, may notice, if you're looking at this closely, this is actually a little bit taller than some of the other indicator panels because I've also customized the height of this and set it to be half the height of the, uh, the price panel down below. So again, we'll get into all the settings in just a sec. I'll show you how to do that kind of stuff. But uh, note that I've got one indicator positioned above the price panel. Here's the main price panel, got one above it. And then I have a couple of indicators positioned down below it. So in my case, I've got the RSI. I've got two indicators actually here in this panel. I've got accumulation distribution and on balance volume. And uh, the on balance volume indicator in this case is actually positioned behind the other indicator, which is accumulation distribution. So I've sort of put those uh, together into one panel. They're very, very similar indicators, but they have some differences, which is nice to see in this kind of comparison when you actually put them in the same panel. So that's one trick that we'll show you in just a second. And then at the very bottom, I've got the scooter indicator. Again, all of these are positioned below the price panel. And I've actually got even one additional thing on here. I've got a horizontal line going across this scooter panel uh, right at the, uh, the 75 level. So there's a lot to dig into on this chart. Again, one of the main ones that I use. So what we're talking about today is how to create charts like this that have these custom positions uh, and more unique orientations than what you sort of might be familiar with out of the box. So let's start digging into the settings and I'll show you exactly how you can create charts that look just like this. So when you scroll down below your chart, you have all of the different settings of the Sharp Charts Workbench. This is where you customize your chart, you add your indicators, add your overlays. In the case of Sharp Charts, you'll notice that we actually have two different blocks here. So we have overlays are one piece, indicators are another. In the case of Sharp Charts, we actually separate those out because overlays are things that typically go on the price panel, the main price panel, overlaid on the price panel. Uh, indicators are things that typically go above or below the, uh, the main price panel. So in the case of Sharp Charts, we've actually broken those up. When we jump over to ACP in just a couple of minutes, you'll see that that's actually one of the big differences between Sharp Charts and ACP. In ACP, we have just kind of a big list of indicators because things are a little bit more fluid. So we'll touch on that in a couple of minutes. We'll save that. Uh, but here on this chart, again, I've got my uh, my overlays here. Um, that is the, uh, the 20, the 50, the 100, the 200, and the 400 here. So I've got those overlays added here. And then when we get down to the indicators, I've got all of those stacked up here. And what we're looking at on today's show, what we're really focused on is this column, the position column. So for all these indicators, I have customized these position settings, which is what we're gonna dig into now. So running through that chart, again, we've got our overlays, but down below, when we remember what we had, we had that one indicator above, and then we had a couple indicators below, and then we also had volume positioned behind. So here we go, we've got the price performance indicator. I've set that as a price performance indicator. I've got the, uh, the symbol relative to, in my case, VTI. And what I've selected here is position above. So when I add this indicator, I select above, and that means that that indicator is gonna be positioned above the primary price panel. Now, I mentioned that there was a little custom trick I did to, uh, to customize the height of that. If you, uh, if you come to the workbench, uh, sort of the first time you come to the workbench, you might actually see that uh, some of those other settings are, uh, are closed. 
you have this option to uh, expand this advanced options panel, which gives you access to some of these additional settings for those uh, those indicators that you add. You've got something similar for uh, for overlays up here as well, that little green arrow. So make sure you open that up. But I have customized, in my case, that indicator that's above the main price panel. I've customized that so it's got a height of 0.5, makes it a little bit easier to see. Drilling down from here, though, the next one that I have is volume. And I've positioned that behind price. So again, you've got that those four different options here, above, behind price, below, and behind indicator. So when I take volume uh, and add that to my chart as a separate indicator, I can position that behind price right here. And so when we, uh, when we look at the chart, what that's gonna show is the volume bars, instead of being a separate panel, they're actually gonna be sort of grayed out right behind the, uh, the main price panel, right behind the price bars. Makes it a little, uh, little easier to see uh, in my eyes because they're brought closer together. So as opposed, again, to, to having that, uh, that volume panel sort of as a separate, uh, separate box below the price panel, you can sort of bring it right in there. Makes it a little easier to kind of line up those volume bars with the price bars. Uh, so that is, uh, is one option you have is to position these indicators behind price. In a couple of minutes too, when we, uh, when we run through some other charts, we'll actually show you some creative uses of that as well. So there's some interesting things that you can do with that. But uh, I've got those volume bars positioned behind price. And then the next couple that I have, again, the RSI, the accumulation distribution, and the scooter line, those are all positioned below. So you can see we've got the RSI indicator. I positioned that below. Uh, we've got the accumulation distribution line. We've got that positioned below. And then I'm gonna skip over on balance volume for a sec, but uh, below that we've got the scooter line also positioned below. Now you can adjust the uh, the order of any of these by using these little arrows here on the, uh, on the workbench. So let's say I wanted to take that scooter line and I wanted to actually bring it up above the RSI. Well, all I have to do is look here for these little, uh, little arrows, line that up with the scooter line, click to bring that up. You'll notice that it moved. I click one more time, click one final time, and now this reflects sort of the new order of those indicator positions. If I wanted to bring it down, I could do uh, the down arrows. But when I hit update here, we'll take a look at this chart. Now what we've got is that scooter line, that scooter indicator has actually been brought up this chart. So it's really easy to position these uh, however you want. Of course, when you add a new indicator here in Sharp Charts for the very first time, it's gonna add right at the bottom. Uh, but if you wanna move that up, it's actually gonna, uh, gonna be pretty easy here to do just by clicking these arrows. Now I will note if you select above, let's say I moved this uh, above and then I hit update, that is actually gonna automatically kick it uh, to be sort of up here with the other above indicator. So that'll make sense here in a sec. Uh, when I click that, now we've got the scooter indicator positioned above the price panel. And when I scroll back down uh, to make things a little bit easier to, uh, to see, we've actually kind of automatically moved that one up a little bit. Now, let's talk about the final indicator on this chart, the one that I breezed over before, and that is the on balance volume. This is the indicator on this chart that's a little bit different. You can see that I've selected behind indicator. So what that means is that whatever indicator is above that line, we're gonna position this indicator that you've added behind the one that's above it. So in this case, again, I like to put the accumulation distribution line and the on balance volume indicator, very, very similar indicators just with uh, slightly different calculations. I like to put those together in one panel because then I can compare how they're sort of moving uh, together or how they're actually diverging. So I've got the accumulation distribution line added below, set to a position of below. And then I've added the on balance volume indicator and I positioned that one behind indicator. So when we show that on the chart, what it's gonna look like is this. We've got that accumulation distribution line and the on balance volume line <clears throat> right behind it. So again, to, uh, to compare these two makes it really easy to see sort of how they're moving together or uh, at periods like this, how they're sort of diverging from each other. Always interesting to note that. Uh, you can also, of course, customize some of the colors there. So you notice that I've made the on balance volume line gray. So in that advanced indicator panel, uh, I've got the uh, accumulation distribution set to a color of black, but I've got the on balance volume line set to be gray. So a little bit grayed out there. You could also do something similar actually by changing this to be black and then adjusting the opacity of that secondary indicator. Maybe we make it 0.3. So if I hit update now, you see this looks actually pretty similar 
uh, but we've got both of them actually as black lines and the unbalanced volume has a lower opacity. So that's going to basically fade it out, make it a little bit more transparent, uh, which uh, sort of makes it great. So some funny little tricks that you can do there. Now there's one other thing that I want to cover on this chart, uh, which is how to get an overlay positioned on an indicator. So a little bit different, and we're going to show this again, one of the big differences between Sharp Charts and ACP. Uh, ACP actually makes this a little bit easier. You can do some even more creative things over in that platform. Uh, but here in Sharp Charts, again, I mentioned we've got that, uh, that horizontal line here at the 75 level on my scooter panel. So that is actually an overlay that I've positioned on this indicator panel. So the reason that I mentioned earlier that little advanced options window the reason that I suggest you open that up is because it does have quite a few additional options for you uh, that allow you to do some pretty creative things. So when we come down to this scooter line, for instance, again, we've got that positioned below the chart and it's actually the last one on the list. So it's going to end up at the very bottom of this chart. But over in that line, if we sort of track across, you notice that you have a column here in the uh, advanced options panel for overlays. So we've taken that list from up here and added that over in the indicators settings. And when you open that up, you get a whole bunch of different options for overlays that you can add to an indicator. So in this case with the scooter line, that's our stock charts technical rank. I wanna say, see if, uh, if something is above or below a specific level, in this case, the 75 level. Now, if this was something like this price performance indicator up here though, I might want to set an overlay that would be a moving average on that. And you can do that really, really easily. We'll show you how this, uh, this horizontal line works and then we'll jump over and do one of those uh, moving averages. But in this case, I've got the horizontal line indicator set. And in the little parameters box, I've typed in the, uh, the level that I want that set at, which is 75 in this case. Uh, and I've given it a specific color. So I've done uh, colon red. So you see that that makes this a red line. If I wanted to change this to be maybe an orange line, I could do 75 colon orange, hit update, and here we go. Now we've got that same 75 line uh, changed to orange. So a couple of different tricks that you can do in here, but in sharp charts, if you wanna add one of these overlays to an indicator, it's pretty easy to do. You just gotta make sure that you've got that advanced options panel open. Now, as I mentioned, if we wanted to add something like a moving average to an indicator, for instance, at the top of this chart, again, I've got that price relative line. I might want to actually look at a 50 day moving average, for instance, of this price relative line. Uh, again, this is the, the symbol that I'm looking at relative to the total market. So I'm trying to address, you know, is this outperforming or underperforming the market? I want to, I might want to smooth that out a little bit and look at it with a, uh, with a moving average, maybe a 50 day, uh, for instance. So when I come down here to add that, Again, all I've got to do, open up that little overlay menu, come down and choose maybe a simple moving average. You see the default actually is 50. And if I wanted to customize the color, I can just do colon red, hit enter, update that, and there we go. Now at the very top, you'll see we've got our, uh, our little label there. We've got a 50 day moving average on this price relative line. So with some of these settings, you can really start to build some advanced charts here. If we think about all the things that are on this chart, we've got an indicator positioned above the price panel here with an overlay set on it. We've got a couple overlays on the chart with one indicator positioned behind, a couple indicators below, but we've got another one down here that's got another overlay on that indicator. And then we've got another indicator positioned actually behind another indicator. So this is a pretty advanced chart but it's incredibly easy to set up just by customizing a couple of these menus. And it really is pretty intuitive. I mean, you think about your, uh, your position options, you've got those four choices above, below, behind price, or behind the other indicator that's, uh, that's right above it. Uh, and then from there, you can just sort of reorder things up and down and add any overlays if you so choose. So that is sort of the, uh, the structural discussion of how you create some of these charts how you can start to build some of these really advanced views. What I wanted to do before we jump over to ACP is uh, show you briefly a couple of the, uh, the different ways that I use this in my approach. So what we're actually going to do is jump over to a list that we've talked about quite a lot on the show. This is my what I call my daily market evaluation list. Uh, these are all of the charts that, uh, that I look at every day, sort of at the high level of the market to get a sense of what's happening. Now I'm pulling this up because a lot of these charts that you're going to see, 
use some of these position settings and some of these concepts that we've been talking about on today's show. So we'll run through a whole bunch of these charts and there are uh, some interesting ones, but think about it in the context of how these indicators are positioned. So here we have what I call my inner market view. We've got a whole bunch of different asset classes on one chart. And on the main price panel, we've got all of those positioned together. So viewing this in a performance view, we can see uh, over the last one year, how all of these different asset classes have been performing. So this is intended to show, you know, stocks versus bonds versus oil versus gold versus commodities, all of that good stuff on one view. So to create this, what I've done is I've taken that main price panel and then positioned a whole bunch of other price indicators behind the main price panel. So we can show that here down in the settings. I've got all of those other securities for bonds and oil and gold and the dollar and commodities. All of those are positioned behind price. They're all set to be a price performance indicator in this case, because I want to view everything in sort of percentage terms. Uh, but then I've got each of those positioned behind the main price panel. Below that, we've got a couple of different ratio charts similar to that price relative line that we were looking at on the previous chart. So we've got uh, bonds versus stocks, gold versus stocks, and commodities versus stocks. And each one of these ratios is positioned below the main price panel. So a couple uh, behind the price, a couple below the price panel, uh, and that's how you can start to create some of these advanced views uh, for market analysis, for single security analysis, anything that you're doing, you can create some interesting views for it. We'll click through these, and by the way, I should mention, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll actually put a link to the, uh, to the chart list in the description down below. You can actually download this chart list, uh, get all of these charts into your own account, start to customize them or use them as is. Uh, again, this is kind of the uh, the daily market evaluation list that I start my morning with uh, every morning running through uh, what's happening in the markets. So we'll go on next to a global markets chart. This shows the, uh, the total world index versus the total US index versus the total international index. Uh, and again, a similar structure. So we've got a couple of different indicators here uh, positioned together on the main price panel. And then we've got a couple of those ratios positioned down below. So there are a whole bunch of charts in this list that look just like that. That's an important structure uh, for a lot of the charts in this list. Again, behind price and then below. Uh, but when we get to some of the other charts, I'm actually going to jump down to, for instance, the new Dow theory chart. Uh, this is a pretty fun one. So we've got one of those performance charts up top. We're looking at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ sort of in one combined view. Uh, we've got both of those indexes here at the top. The uh, the, deep, the root chart, uh, the root symbol here is SPX, but we've got uh, CompQ uh, added actually behind. Oh, uh, we've got CompQ added sort of behind that price of the, uh, the S&P 500. So when we scroll down here, I've added a price performance indicator just like we did with that intermarket chart, given the, uh, the symbol as CompQ here, and I positioned that behind price. What we have below that though are individual price panels uh, for both of those symbols. So both of those indexes, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. To do that, I've come down here, I've added price indicators for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I've also added a little log parameter to actually put that in logarithmic scale. But I positioned both of those below the main price panel. So we've got sort of both those indexes in performance view up top. Then we've got both of those uh, set as candlestick charts. So, you know, individual candlestick charts for both of those indexes. And then below that, we've got a ratio chart uh, of the S&P 500 versus the NASDAQ. So this is what I call my new Dow theory view. I look at this every day uh, to say, you know, are, are these indexes tracking together or is one starting to slip, one starting to falter and, uh, and decline like we actually saw a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago here with, uh, you know, the NASDAQ really being weak while the S&P 500 continued to trend higher. Uh, but again, by using some of those position settings, you can really dig into these charts and create some pretty customized views. So there's some other fun ones in here. We can look, for instance, at adv advancers and decliners. I've got two indicators here positioned above the price panel. Uh, this is looking at advancing stocks on the uh, on the NYSE uh, divided by the total active symbols on the NYSE. So um, you know, on a on a percentage basis, is this a heavy advancing day or a heavy declining day? We can start to see that. On a day like today, actually, we've got the uh, the NYSE slipping by over a percent, so we've got a, a pretty heavy declines day. 77% uh, of the uh, NYSE uh, declining on the day. 
Um, but anyways, we've got both of these positioned here above that main price panel. And I've even added a couple of overlays here. So we've got some horizontal lines at 50%, 75%, and 90% uh, in different colors. Uh, again, using that overlays feature uh, down below. So we've got the uh, those price panels here set to above, and then I've added those, uh, those horizontal line indicators. Uh, in this case, it's uh, <laughs> getting real wacky here. We've got uh, a uh, 0.9, and uh, I've made that red, separating those all by a comma. So I've got uh, 0.9 colon red, comma, 0.75 colon orange, comma, 0.5 colon black. So I can actually add multiple uh, horizontal lines to, uh, to one of those indicators. But lots and lots that you can do here. Uh, and then we've got one indicator positioned down below. Um, so you can start to, uh, to see how some of these concepts can really allow you to create advanced charts. This is uh, advancers and decliners on the NASDAQ. We've got volatility, uh, lots and lots. So I wanted to give you this chart list, sort of show you uh, how some of these charts come together on the show, but also give you this chart list. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, down in the description below, you'll actually be able to, uh, to put these charts into your own account. Uh, so uh, go get those charts, start to play around with them, uh, and, uh, and explore some of the settings, some of the ways that I've created uh, some of these charts from that daily market evaluation list. Now, I know we've covered a ton here in Sharp Charts, but we're gonna jump over to ACP and talk about how some of these concepts apply over in that new advanced charting platform. So I'm gonna come up to the top, I'm gonna select ACP right here, and I am gonna type in Adobe. We're gonna jump over to that Adobe chart. Similar concepts here in ACP, uh, but a few differences. The way that you sort of structure these charts, the way that you can add things, move things around, is a little bit different. So in ACP, again, the whole goal of ACP is to create a very dynamic sort of fluid charting experience. So we can actually zoom in and out on these charts. We can move through time back and forth. Lots and lots of different options for, uh, for sort of bringing interactivity to your charting experience. Uh, but one of the other very, very cool things that we can do is position indicators on your chart dynamically. So here in ACP, instead of having to click those uh, little up and down arrows like we were doing in Sharp Charts, in ACP, positioning indicators can actually be done in two different ways. Uh, but the easiest one is actually to just click and grab the legends on your chart and drag them to wherever you want. So when you start to do that, you'll see that we've got those little yellow indicators that, uh, that show you where you're positioning something. Uh, when you see one of those little yellow indicators around an indicator panel, in this case, around the main price panel, that means that if I dropped this right now, if I let go of the mouse, uh, it's actually gonna drop it behind the price panel or sort of within uh, that indicator panel that we have the, uh, the yellow border around. Now, when I drag this up a little bit, you notice that now I just have a single line. When I have a single line going across, that yellow indicator means uh, that this is uh, gonna position this indicator between those two uh, existing indicator panels, or in this case, the price panel and, uh, and the price relative line up above. Again, I can drag this up. Now I would actually be putting the RSI behind that price relative line. I could do something similar down here. I could drag it to be behind the accumulation distribution panel. Lots and lots of different options. Uh, but moving indicators around your charts in ACP really is as simple as clicking them and dragging them to where you want. So in this case, for instance, I've got the RSI now positioned above this chart. If I wanted to grab this price relative line and drag this down below, it's really easy to do that uh, dynamically. Uh, all the, uh, the experiences here in ACP are, are highly interactive and sort of very dynamic is how we like to describe them. Uh, so that is one of the key differences for positioning these indicators in ACP. You can actually just click on those legends and drag them around. Now I've got the chart settings panel open on the left though, because the other way that you can position these indicators is actually to click and drag within here. You'll notice that we have these little grab bars uh, on the, uh, the chart outline. That's really what this represents is uh, all of the different indicators that you have on your chart. We've got an outline of that here in the chart settings panel. Uh, so if I wanted to sort of get this back to the way it was before, I can actually just drag this down. You'll see that you get very similar little yellow indicators, uh, whether something is gonna be positioned behind or whether it's gonna be positioned in between. Uh, we can just do that simply by dragging these around. So if I wanted to put this price relative line back up top, now we're sort of back to the way that this chart looked originally. So positioning indicators here in ACP 
really easy and, uh, and pretty intuitive just by clicking and dragging them to where you want them to be. Whether you're doing that from the chart settings outline uh, or whether you're actually doing that on the chart itself, clicking and grabbing on those little labels, moving those indicators around. Now, a couple of the other differences with, uh, with ACP and Sharp Charts, again, there's uh, quite a lot more customizations that you can do in ACP. So for instance, if we wanted to add one of those overlays to an indicator uh, in ACP, we've got a couple of different ways to do that. Let's say we wanted to add that horizontal line that we were looking at in Sharp Charts down on that scooter indicator. We've got a couple of different ways that we can do that. We could actually add a horizontal line indicator here from the add indicator menu. We could come in and search for horizontal line, uh, add that to, to the chart and then drag that down to the scooter indicator. But the easier way to do that, we've actually made that quite a lot easier here in ACP. Uh, what we can do is actually go into the chart settings of this indicator and we've got a whole section uh, similar to what we had in Sharp Charts uh, that allows you to add overlays to specific indicators. So I can get there either by clicking on the legend or by coming up to the chart outline and clicking on the little gears icon. I'm going to click on the chart legend though and what that's going to do is open up the edit indicator panel for the scooter indicator. Now we've got uh, some settings in here for, for customizing the look of it, customizing what symbol we're doing, if we want the rainbow background or the blank background, lots of different options. But at the bottom, we've also got a section called add overlays. And you'll see this on other indicators as well. When we do that, we can select an overlay just like we did in Sharp Charts. I could actually come down here and select horizontal line. Now I've added an overlay here and I can actually go into the settings for that overlay that I've just added on the scooter panel. So I can click into that. Uh, I can come in here and type in a value. Let's say we wanted that at 75. And you notice that this has automatically been set to share the scale with that scooter indicator. So it's automatically set to show up on that scooter indicator. I personally like to make that a solid thick line. I think that's uh, a little easier to see. And from there, we can start to customize all of our different settings. Let's say we wanted this to be a uh, solid, uh, we'll do something different. We'll do a solid red line. If it crosses below 75, we wanna get out of it. So we got a dark red line there uh, for our uh, horizontal line. We do have a little, uh, little box here, hide legend. So by default, this is a full featured indicator on the chart. And so if you uncheck that, you see that we actually get the, uh, the full legend. In this case, these charts get uh, sort of you know crunched onto the screen when you got a whole bunch of indicators. So I personally like to keep those legends hidden uh, on some of these sort of extra indicators that, uh, that I add, some of these uh, overlays that I add to indicators. Uh, but lots of different options for, for doing stuff like that. Now, I've done something similar here again on this chart, just like we had in Sharp Charts. I've got the accumulation distribution line and the on balance volume, and I positioned those together on the same panel. When I first, let's uh, let's actually kind of jump in there and build that. Uh, when I first add, I'll take the scooter off actually so that we can make this a little easier to see. Uh, when I first add the accumulation distribution line, it's gonna add as its own indicator. And the same is gonna happen when I add the on balance volume. So I can come in here, I can search for on balance volume, click to add that. And again, it's gonna add as its own indicator panel because the default is to have all of these sort of on their own, uh, in their own space. Well, if I wanna create that, uh, that same look that we had before where I've got the on balance volume behind the accumulation distribution line, it's really easy to do that. All I've gotta do, click here, drag it right in there. Now I've got both of those together. I can actually jump back to the on balance volume settings and make that a gray line. Let's say we wanted it to be a light gray line. And there we go. In just a couple of clicks, now we've created that same chart with those two indicators actually positioned together on one panel. So again, ACP, similar concepts to what you can do in Sharp Charts. You've got all these different ways to create uh, advanced charts with different positions. Uh, and, uh, and here in ACP, it's actually a lot easier because there's so much interactivity to the chart when you think, hey, you know, I want this up here. You don't have to go fumbling with the settings down below. You can just click the legend, drag it right up. Let's say I wanted this, uh, this RSI again to be at the very top of the screen. We can do that really, really easily just by dragging these things around. So very, very cool. You can even do things like, for instance, I've got the volume positioned here behind price. Let's say I wanted to break that out to be its own panel. I can just drag that right out. Now we've got volume as its own panel. So 
lots of interactive features that you can explore here in ACP. And again, you can do the same concept. You can start to go nuts and create uh, some of these really advanced views. Uh, one of the best ways actually to find some of these advanced views is to come over here to our layouts menu. Uh, I'm gonna close down the your layouts piece, but we have a section in here called sample layouts. We've actually done a lot of this. I'll give us a little more room by closing that down. Uh, we've done a lot of this uh, sort of advanced chart creation for you. Uh, for instance, we've got an inner market analysis view uh, that looks pretty similar to what we were looking at. Uh, it's actually based off of that, uh, that chart that I was showing you earlier. Uh, we've got all those different asset classes on one chart here together. Uh, and when we actually jump over to the settings, you can see all of those positioned together on one chart, uh, all in the price panel, and then we've got some ratio charts over here. We've got lots and lots of sample charts, though, for you to play with. Uh, sample layout, sample charts. We've got some of the major market indexes, uh, all on one view. Uh, we've got, here's a new Dow Theory one. Uh, for instance, we've got uh, some really interesting views. And so you can chart to uh, start to see how some of these concepts really come together, positioning indicators around your charts, uh, and then actually building layouts around those in ACP. You can do these multi-chart layouts up to 12 charts on the screen at once. So lots and lots to play around with in here. So much to see in ACP. I know we've done uh, episodes on it in the past, but there really is more uh, to this platform that we can possibly cover in one show. So I would encourage you if you're uh, unfamiliar with ACP and what we've been building over there, uh, go check it out. There's a lot to, uh, lot to play around with there. Uh, and a lot of the uh, the concepts that we have in Sharp Charts, all of those apply over in uh, in ACP. It uh, it really is uh, intended to be kind of the next generation of uh, of stock charts. Not that Sharp Charts is going anywhere. Uh, we are going to continue to invest heavily in that platform. We love having both. It's been actually a great experience in the uh, the last year since we launched ACP, having these two different charting platforms for uh, for people to play around with. Uh, I find that I actually use both of them. I love to use. Uh, sharp charts for a lot of my kind of static market analysis, where I'm just watching these charts uh, evolve slowly over time. Uh, for instance, in that uh, that daily market evaluation list that you saw, you can just kind of scroll through those charts, really easy to set them up and just watch them. Uh, but ACP, fantastic for research. You can actually run scans right within the platform. So I'm using uh, using ACP to run most of my scans and then sweep those results filter through those charts. Uh, great for single stock analysis, really, really a dynamic look, being able to zoom in and out uh, through time sort of dynamically, again, without having to fumble through uh, different menus, a huge, huge boost. So having these two platforms, we are, are really enjoying it. We love it. Um, and so we're going to continue to invest heavily in both of them. So for any of you worrying that, uh, that Sharp Charts is going to go somewhere, don't worry at all. Uh, Sharp Charts is definitely not going anywhere. It's only going to continue to get better. So anyways, I wanna thank you for joining me on today's show. I know we covered a ton, but hopefully you saw some things you haven't seen before, got some ideas, maybe thought about something from an angle that you haven't thought about it before. I know there's a lot to explore here in both platforms, positioning these indicators uh, around your charts, whether it's above, below, behind price, behind indicators, you can move all of these around. And now with ACP, you've got this even more dynamic way to set up a lot of these charts. So lots to explore. Hopefully this has given you some ideas. Again, to help get you started, I'd recommend if you're watching this on YouTube, check out the link in the description below. We're gonna have that market evaluation chart, uh, my daily market evaluation chart available for you. You can click that link, uh, go see those charts and actually save them to your own stock charts account. That's a great way to get up and running with some of these sort of advanced charts in Sharp Charts. Uh, but then in ACP, I would definitely encourage you to go play around with some of those sample layouts. Uh, there's a lot to see in those sample layouts and a lot of the uh, the individual charts within those layouts uh, use a lot of these uh, sort of advanced positioning features. So lots to see there, lots to explore. Hopefully today's episode has given you some, uh, some new ideas, some new things to play around with over the weekend. Uh, again, I want to thank you so much for joining me. Remember that we do this show every Friday, Stock Charts in Focus, uh, intended to get you more value out of the site, show you things you haven't seen before, talk to you about everything that's happening. Uh, around the site. Uh, one thing I did want to mention before I let you go, we've got a new show from Joe Rabel that just launched on Stock Trace TV uh, this past week. A great, great new show. Uh, lots of stock picking going on. He's going to have an interactive experience. You can actually throw 
uh, stock ideas over there to Joe and he'll walk through them uh, with you, uh, really kind of running through the markets together with you. Uh, you get a, a chance to really kind of build uh, what the show is going to talk about. So a highly interactive experience. But the other thing that's important there is Joe is going to be using ACP. He's a big, big fan of ACP. So if you're uh, interested in ACP, if you've been using it or you're, uh, you're curious about learning more uh, about how the platform works, how you can incorporate it into your process, definitely check out Stock Talk from Joe Rabel on Stock Trace TV. He's going to be doing that show every week. And again, using ACP, showing you around some of the, uh, the tips and tricks that he uses in his approach. Uh, and it'll be uh, you know an active show running through the markets uh, using ACP out there in the real world. So uh, a good one to check out. Go check out the uh, the previous episode that we just did, the uh, the first episode of Stock Talk with Joe. That's up on our YouTube channel and the on-demand platform at stockchartstv.com. Uh, but definitely a, a great way to learn more about ACP. Of course, we'll continue to cover it here on Stock Charts and Focus, uh, talking about everything that's happening, showing you around uh, ACP and Sharp Charts and all the other features of the site. So much to cover. So join me every Friday for Stock Charts and Focus for another episode just like this one. My name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at Stock Charts. I want to thank you again for joining me. I will see you very soon for another episode of In Focus. And until then, chart on, my friends. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.